Does Monday at the office feel like a storm? Not with Microsoft Copilot. That feeling when Copilot gets everyone up to speed instantly? It's sunny again. When Copilot simplifies complex data so your teams can act, that sun's shining on a beach. And when Copilot uncovers hidden insights, you're on that beach with your people and you find buried treasure. That's Microsoft Copilot. Learn more at Microsoft.com slash AI for all. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of The Reality Is. It's uh, Sunday night, but you're listening to this on Monday morning. Because it's the beginning of the week, and I'm here with my brother to talk about nonsense. Ad Hello. Hook. Hello. Hey, uh, do you watch Good Morning America? I do not watch any of the morning shows. Did you hear about what happened? Is there an affair? It's very funny. Why is it funny? Because I just... I don't... I. I have thoughts. Okay. So two people who I guess are people who work for Good Morning America, they're uh, anchors, anchors, um, TJ Holmes and Amy Robach. Oh, the Amy Robach lady is attractive. Yeah. So they were caught like by private investigators cheating. And I mean, when we say like private investigator, I mean, it's like it looks honestly, it looks like they were filming a reality TV show. Like it doesn't even look like they're not aware that the cameras are there. They're practically Jim Halperting the cameras the entire time they're cheating. But apparently they went on a getaway and there's all these videos and like pictures and stuff that came out. And they're Why both are private investigators putting out the pictures though like who put private investigators on them so uh, you, is it you just know paparazzi i my thing is like do paparazzi give a shit about the anchors of good morning america i guess i mean they're well you I, mentioned before very passionately that you don't trust any of it so do you think that they um this was their way of getting out of their relationships do you think they were doing themselves a trend? I don't think they did something like that. My guess would be like rival news networks did something about it. Whoa, what? Wait, a, wait a second. You're saying like, what's the Today Show? You're saying like Matt Lauer. I don't know who hosts, who hosts the Today <laughs> no. Show. You're I saying can tell you that Matt Lauer does not host it today. So I know that much. <laughs> you're saying Katie some... Couric. You're nope, saying also not at the Today Show. Anymore. You're saying uh, Hoda Kotb is out there paying for somebody to spy. It's espionage. It's uh, show versus show. Yeah, it's I Al Roker. So. I think it's probably like the New York Post or something. Because that's where I saw it. The New York Post is a dirty, filthy, disgusting organization. Yeah, but New York Post is basically us. like People Magazine at this point. They're like mm -hmm. TMZ. They just post anything. Like, it's, it's all of the news outlets post the same shit. It's my great shame. So I pretend like I'm above all of this stuff. <laughs> but every, every morning I wake up, I go to ESPN.com. It's the first <laughs> website I go to. Mm. Then another another um, a source of great shame for me. The next thing I check is Drudge Report. Oh, my God. I'm a terrible person. Although Matt Drudge has turned around on uh, Donald Trump. Like he did. He, he, okay, um, people who turn, he was... people who quote unquote turn around on Donald Trump are not yeah. impressive people. OK, like that is not. Oh, congratulations. You don't like to eat shit anymore. Like. Fuck off. You ate What's it like, happily. You made shit pies. You ate it yourself. You went num, 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 and then you served it to other people, too. Fuck off. Yeah. No. So, uh, but I, I've been going to Drudge Report now for like 20 years, which is really bad. But it started off because it was like the first news aggregator. Um, and that was before I knew that he was like a terrible piece of shit. Then, you know, what was interesting about the Drudge Report for a little while? He was obsessed with Touchdown Tom Brady. Like, you would see, like, Tom Brady news on there, like, where it didn't make sense. It was just lots of Tom Brady news. I was like, what's going on here? Um, and then, obviously, he's obviously racist and obviously a piece of shit. 
but um, he's really been anti-Trump and kind of pro-Biden for like the last three or four years. Um, <laughs> anyways, but he's still still a terrible person. And still, yes, I am embarrassed that I checked that. Um, and then, anyways, the last thing I check is uh, I go to nypost.com. Um, and you know what? It's starred, so don't, I don't have to put in the ypost.com because as soon as I hit N, it's the first thing that pops up. And then I go and I go through the news. Anyways, that's what I Anyway, do. guys, this is the last episode of the Mondays. <laughs> um, I, I'm, I'm going to stop now. I, I feel like this is as good as time as I need to say, you know what? We don't need We don't need any more takes. We're done. The takes are over, guys. Ugh. Especially not from real. Um, yeah. That's troubling. Honestly, but makes I'm not, sense. I, I don't celebrate it. I'm just saying it's where I go. You're to giving get them your news, clicks. My news aggregation or aggregate, like that's where it's a it's a nice easy way to see what's uh, what's going on. You know. But do you look at it and go like, oh God, they're so stupid, or do you go look yes. at it and go, this is where these are facts. No, no. So like with New York Post and like in the last week, right? There's been all of these like stupid pro William and Kate news stories. Oh my God. I can't wait to talk about that Be- because they're in America. So you're like, mm-hmm. Oh, this is so stupid. Like it's so blatant. And then, you know, when you see the headline, so I never really click on any of the stories because the headlines kind of give away what they're driving at. And it's usually racist or stupid. Um, so I don't click on it, but then I'm like, Oh, okay. So this is what they're going to be talking about for the next couple of weeks. And then I go, okay, nothing too major. So like last week or, it so last week or maybe Friday, uh, Friday into Saturday, the big thing was um, uh, Elon Musk was revealing how Twitter had censored the New York Post's Hunter Biden story. Mm-hmm. So the New York Post, so it was like a big victory lap for them. So okay. there were all these stories about that. So I clicked on one of them just to see what they were talking about. And uh, so I saw that. And then um, I was like, you know what I realized? I don't care if there's like a, a post that says that Hunter Biden did coke off of like a bust of Abraham Lincoln. I don't think I don't it's going to affect me in any way. Yeah. So, you know, it's whatever. Okay. Hey, what so, are we about? oh, the cheating. <laughs> Your melatonin is here. Um, yeah, we were talking about the GMA people cheating, and you were saying that you believe that it was, uh, the the folks over at the today show that were that were trying to embarrass these people but i think that you're wrong because this is the first time i've ever heard of this tj man or this amy person um but what i wanted to talk about that is like so obviously they had this affair it's very like they're not even trying to hide it they're gallivanting hand in hand hand on butt in some instances gropey mcgroper town and it brings me to the topic of uh, l- a little, it's still fall, so we can't call them pumpkin eaters, but cheater cheaters. And um, do you sometimes, like, I feel like there are people who cheat who, like, have, like, guilt and shame and they, like, hide it. And then I feel like there's sometimes some people who cheat where I'm like, are you asking to be caught? Because, like, these guys seem <laughs> like they were asking to be caught. Well, the thing is, you don't know what's going on in their actual, like their in their. Oh, of course, uh, real nobody knows. Lives, right? oh, no, so God. you know they could they could have already <laughs> had that conversation with their spouses, right? I think in well, general, no, they. I don't think so because they went. They took off all their social media. They they took off all their social media media. <laughs> that's not a me thing. Um, that's a Guasho Crappens thing. I can't okay. claim that, but yeah, they okay. they turned off so, their social media. Whatever it is. So, I mean, they partially they probably did it because now it's out in the open and whatever. That's annoying. Um, but just uh, my experiences with people that I know that have cheated or people that are currently cheating um, is, you know, it's weird. It's like sometimes when I'm talking to people and, uh, who are currently who are in the midst of an affair, mm-hmm. uh, the elephant in the room of cheating kind of disappears for them. So it's like. So like that initial thing of like, oh, I have to hide this and I am actually at fault for cheating, that kind of disappears. And then they start treating the relationship as like, like a real relationship. 
You know what mm. I mean? So like if they, you know, if they're hurt by something that's happened, like if they're hurt by something that their spouse did um, and then, you know, they'll just complain about it. Like they're complaining about their spouse, like they're, you know, like they, that they, like they regularly complain about their spouse, but then you're also like, Oh, by the way, you are cheating. So, um, you know, I'm not sure if you really are in the right to be complaining about a spouse. Yeah. Right? But, but it's like, oh, you know what? The spouse doesn't know, so that shouldn't count against me in this instance. I, and I think that's how people manage it because you can't really live with the guilt, right? I think mm. maybe you get, you are excited by the sneaking around, but you nobody wants to like live their life as a cheater. Nobody enjoys like living in guilt. You just kind of turn a blind eye to it. I mean, I don't know. I feel like some people are just not made for monogamous relationships. Yeah, that's true too. I think that like I think that there's some people who should just not be settled down. You know, you know what? Maybe they they should find somebody who would be more interested in like a open relationship. I think that there's plenty of people like that. Um maybe, but like the concept of open relationships is pretty new, right? So I'm not sure what makes a person more or less susceptible to be monogamous or whatever um in our culture in our background that's not like that's a stupid question right like you can't go to like your daisy husband or wife and be like hey i think we should have an open relationship because that's that's just not a thing yeah Um, but we're like just freshly uh to the point where polygamy is like not okay like (laughs) let's be let's be honest here like like muslim men are very like that is like i'd say in the last like two generations last two generations we've like phased out polygamy but like i I don't know i mean so our parents generation i don't think really had any polygamy i I don't remember any uncles or aunties uh having a second yeah they had secret polygamy they had like which was basically an affair yeah (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> or like you or like they did like we knew somebody who had like like we you you did hear it was like not an a, a, an honorable thing at least like yeah. you didn't have like like you always heard like oh you know you heard so and so's dad you know went to america uh, had a secret marriage yeah yeah you had like a second family second family like yeah, the second yeah, family a... stuff blows my mind a whole family um, I th- that's I a lot. It, Why? <laughs> Seems like a like a pain in the ass to deal with. Yeah, like um, don't do that. Like just go and have the affair. Like go and have the affair. You know, get your get your socks rocking. Whatever. I don't know what words I'm saying. <laughs> get, get, what do you call it? What do you get your get your rocks off? Yes. <laughs> get your socks, socks off. Have anything to, yeah um and and call it a day but a whole secret family that's too much it's that feels you know what a secret family to me feels like you made a huge mistake and you didn't know how to fix it so you were just like stuck in a web of lies and then you're like i can't back it down now i'm i think the secret family stuff that used to happen back in the day was just um, I, I think men were just looking for an excuse. The you know the Muslim man's justification for like a second wife or like a second family or whatever um, is all nonsense. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Like I don't know if you're this is dark. I don't want to get dark. But like uh, in the early '90s, uh, mm-hmm. because of the war in Bosnia and stuff, mm-hmm. there were all these news stories about like you know there's all these widowed women, right? Oh God. Um, and then there was like all of these like dudes in the Middle East and in Pakistan that were like, oh, it is our religious obligation to take oh, care yuck. of these women Disgusting. and we have to marry them. And then instead of marrying like the widows, they would marry their daughters. I'm like, what oh, the fuck? No. Oh, yeah, God. Yeah, this is uh, that's horrible. That's a crime. That's a crime. Well, it's. It's not a crime because they were of age, but I'm just saying they would, you know, that's the Real, justification. You know, this of age thing, it's like once a week you have to just bring up the fact that you were totally down uh, with I'm If they are babies. of age, it is not a crime. I'm sorry. That is how the law works. Oh, if you're God. not breaking a law, it is not a crime. Oh, that's God. all I'm putting in. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, I just like, I just hate men. <laughs> Oh, really? I haven't gotten that. (laughs) 
Um, so this like GMA couple thing happened, right? Uh, by the way, the lady Amy, she's married to Andrew Shu of yeah, the nineties. Right yeah, I was like, what? That. Andrew Shu, from he's Jersey, he's a Jersey boy. Yeah, I mean that literally means nothing. You always bring that up when somebody's from New Jersey, as if it's like paradise. Like I we live are here also too. From New Jersey. Yeah, we live here too. It's not. Like, oh, he's a Jersey guy. Oh no, oh, a Jersey person. He Sorry. must be made of gold. <laughs> I do feel a certain kinship to the Jersey people. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're like, has he had a fat sandwich? Does he cut a, call it a pork roll or Taylor ham? And by the way, it's an excellent impression of me. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, I went to sushi the other day with my friends, and I did not know I impersonated my husband to a T. That was it. That's the story. Anyway, um, so yeah, Andrew Shu. Like, you're married to Andrew Shu, and his wife is beautiful. He had a crazy Facebook, uh, Instagram post a couple of years ago, uh, for his wife, his, him and his wife's like 10 year anniversary. And the whole thing is like, you know, God bless this woman for putting up with me for the last 10 years. And if I could just get 10 more days let alone 10 more years or something like that, or 10 more hours of her time. She put up with my shit. I'm like, wow, you really, so you know, you're garbage. You know, I you're a bad sweet. guy. Huh? I think it's sweet. I think it's sweet. I'm sure it's he loved sweet. his wife. Yeah. I'm sure Excuse he loved me. his wife. What? And now he's in love with this other lady. It happens. You fall out of love. It's okay. Oh my God. I'm not going to judge somebody else's love. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. <laughs> At this point in my life, in my advanced stage, Okay. And I've told you, I think I've like said this day, I've told my own husband this. I'm going to leave my husband. It's not going to be for another man. Okay. Congratulations to everybody <laughs> involved. <laughs> <laughs> no, like I, so we were talking about this weekend about like what midlife crisis for like a woman looks like versus a midlife crisis for a man. Mm -hmm. Like a midlife crisis for a man is like a car or another woman. Whereas, like, for my, me and my friends who are, like, in our late 30s or into our 40s, like, a midlife crisis for us is just, like, I like to get, like, a secret apartment where it's just quiet. Just now? It's just, it's just quiet. Yeah. <laughs> I was on a secret apartment. Like, I'm not even doing any, like, sneaky shit there, you know? Like, with a mm -hmm. nice tub. Yeah. Well, That's so, it. you know, uh, I'm not, this isn't a midlife crisis thing, but, you know... I have seen my my uh, friends and um, uh, our relatives that are around our age that are married. They, um, you know, they don't go and buy like a secret apartment or anything, but I see them make up excuses and have little breaks for themselves. Right. So they'll go like grocery shopping or not... um, in some cases, that's... they'll come over here um, and thing. pretend like they're hanging out with me when they're really just on their phone the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's not so the I've same seen, thing. But that's so not the same that, thing. That. That's not the same thing. What I'm saying is like like I want to sometimes like and I've told I've told my husband this. I asked him once I said, Hey, would it be weird if like once every few months I just like checked in at like our like a nice hotel in Montclair and just like spent the weekend there? And he was like, I don't care. Of course, go for yeah. it. Yeah, of course. I don't care. I don't give a shit. He was like, Don't tell my parents because they're gonna think that's weird. But yeah, like, it's gonna sound like you're, yeah, you they're gonna think separated. that we're having problems. Yeah, yeah. But if like you need to do that, that's fine. I wouldn't even like. That's the wild thing is like I wouldn't even do anything crazy in that situation. Mm -hmm. I, I would just order room service. I would probably watch reruns of like New Girl, and then I would. Hey, maybe I would finally watch The Wire. I don't know. No, anything I doubt is that's possible. That sounds like yeah. productive work, and it doesn't sound like you want to do any sort of. <laughs> Productive Guess work. what? I so I was like I you know I set up my new office space, and so I've got like all these ex extra this extra room on my desk for like various screens. I have like my work screen. I've got like my podcasting screen. I've got like my iPad screen. So I was like, oh great, I, this is great. I'm like doing stuff in the office. I will catch up on Sopranos. I know I must have watched at least half of season one. Guess what? Real uh, three quarters of the way of the second episode. <laughs> <laughs> you garbage. <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah, like I think like 
for for women, a midlife crisis is a lot of alone time. That's like, not like true. Just... That is that's for you. There is a lot of women <laughs> no, that and my, is not for happening. me and my friends. You it, and your it, lazy it means, friends. I call and... them lazy. No, no. How dare you? It's like <laughs> alone time or like just being around other women. Like that's what that looks like. But it's being it wouldn't around, be it wouldn't being be around like other women getting on your break dick down. Sounds... No, thank you. Being being around other women on your alone time sounds miserable. Like it sounds exhausting, and that is just that is only based on how I've seen you and other women I know talk about their friends in real life, and just be like, okay, oh, no, but you know, like, I have like a group of girlfriends that I love, like my yeah, high school but, friends. On. I would spend so much. No, you know, like we're crazy about each other. <laughs> yeah, but like a whole weekend. Actually, I, uh, I can yeah, that. of course. I just but did that only- like two weeks ago. It only works because you don't see each other that often. I mean, your day to day, you know, your day to day friends, you wouldn't want to hang out with them. I just like spent your... the day with one of my very good friends. Was today. It, did it feel? Did it feel like you were on an adulterous affair, or did no? It feel like I don't want to have an adulterous affair. That's my point. A midlife crisis for a woman does not look like an adulterous affair. A midlife crisis for a woman just means like. A space where you get to like feel like a person that you are not like where you're not tied to a title. Like I am not a mother right now. I am not I, a wife right now. Yeah. Why are you cringing? What's the problem I'm just, here? I'm I'm just saying, I think I think you just I think you just want to go on a vacation by yourself. I, I don't do think it's a, I don't so think bad. this is a midlife crisis. A midlife crisis is a little bit more serious. Yeah, but that's my point, right? Like for women, for women a midlife crisis isn't even like this earth shattering thing. Like we're for a man. I feel like he's like burning his life up. I think for women, it's like, I just like to get away for a little bit because I'm responsible. I'm like, a man is like, I'm going to go and have a secret family, get caught by the paps. There's plenty of women that have a midlife crisis. Like the one that you're describing about men. There's plenty of women that have affairs. Okay, I'm just saying me and my friends, that's yes. not what we're looking to do. There me and my friends, we're just if we're if if we're going to get crazy, it's just going to be like order a lot of room service. Yeah. Yeah, spend like a, you know, money on like a great meal and some mm-hmm. good booze and that's it. Okay. Hit up a dispensary and take a nap. Yeah, it just think it sounds like you need a night off. <laughs> wear, wear pajamas for a weekend. No bras. <laughs> That's what that looks like. Mm. But I feel like men, like, I sometimes try to understand the purpose of why a man is cheating. You know? But he's not cheating alone. There's, you know, there's... Two okay, this, involved. this, good, good Morning America couple, sure, they're both cheating together. They're hand in hand, hand on butt, cheating with yes. each other, right? Great, fine. But, mm-hmm. like, you, you and I discovered a situation this week, which was wild, um, where I ran into a friend of mine from college for, after 15 years at a party, and she and I connected after, like I said, 15 years. And then she asked me about a person that she had been talking to on and off. And I was like, oh, yeah, I think I know like a couple of people who know him and you know him. You as in you, my brother. And then I asked you about him. And you were like, yeah, what about him? He's married with a kid. I was like, what? (laughs) And when she confronted, when my friend confronted this man, he just denied the whole thing. He denied everything. He denied he denied having a child. He denied having a wife. Yeah. He denied even having cousins. We were like, yeah. those are your blood relatives. And he was like, nope. <laughs> and it's just like, what are you doing? What's the point? But that like, is not the but that is not the measure of all men, right? That is a no, piece of, of shit. No, of course. I'm just I'm just saying like that guy is a particular piece of shit, but that's not, you know, yes. we know other guys. We know we know people, we know people who after like being married for like 25 years go and marry a YouTuber. So like there's plenty of shit fish in the sea. There are plenty of shit fish in the sea, and I and I will agree. Most of the shit fish that you and I have come across in these situations uh, are the men. Um, so yes, I will concede that point. 
But I think you know, I think the reason why I think the reason why I get more mad when men cheat is because, like, traditionally and because of the patriarchy, we do like the the power is in a man's hands, right? Like, so men are, and especially in the relationships that like we viewed where there has been cheating, like. Mm -hmm. The power is within a man's it with it is within a man. So it's like you probably have most of the control in your marriage. You probably have good financial setup. You probably have you know everything there is to know about your wife. And here you are still desiring something else, right? And like women, we naturally are like people pleasers. We're like nurturers. We just like don't make that face. You don't think I'm a people pleaser? You don't. But you, you, you. But I'm a monster. Are, I get it. But you're only no, ta- listen. I, I agree. I agree that it is usually men, um, mm-hmm. and it's based a lot on the fact of our culture and the culture at large, right? I mean, we are and women only got the right to vote like a, a hundred years ago. So this yes. is like you know two millennium or I don't know. I don't know how long people have been around, but that's the reason why, right? So yes, the world is set up for men to thrive and. The world is set up unfairly for men. So that's what's going to happen. So that is why the cheating usually happens for men. So, you know, it's the unfairness. Having said that, if if a man has the resources to support his family and also the cheating, right? Let's take the, like, let's take the, like, the moral part of it out of it. Right. Like, why are you in a relationship with a person? So why is the other woman in the relationship with this man? Is it out of love? What is she in it for? Does she know he's married? You're saying like the mistress? Yeah. Why are we even talking about her? She's not the problem here. She is not the problem. She's not the one who's made vows. I do not ever knock the other woman. Like that whole idea of like, she should know better and she should fuck that. That man is married to that woman. She owes nothing to that woman. So, what, Especially what should... in situations like my friend's situation where she didn't even know that this man yeah. was married with a child. Of course, yes. She was dealing with a garbage person. You were dealing yeah. with a garbage person. A full garbage that. goblin, yeah. Yes. Um, I'm just saying, man, Like, I, I understand it's unfair and it's usually men that do the cheating. But what do you I think that when women do cheating... Mm-hmm. When women do cheating, what words am I saying? When women cheat, I feel like there is usually more emotional like stuff involved when the cheating is happening. Whereas I feel like with men, it's like, what do you what else do you want? What do you want? Like I just get angry when men cheat. Whereas when women cheat, I'm like, you know, she had to think a lot before she did that. She did not just like one thing led to another, the situation. A lot of shit had to happen. At least the women that I know who have ever cheated. It's like a lot of shit had to happen before she decided to step out on her marriage. You know? So in, in your view, the man is the man who is cheating is just going through like, I don't know, a candy store and then just picking up women and deciding to do that. You think that there's no thought involved in it? I think that there's way less thought involved when men cheat than women. You understand that that is probably unfair, but it's okay for you to think that because it's okay for me to be unfair to men because the society is a patriarchy. So okay, all right. (laughs) As long as and and I agree with you, it's okay. You get you get because you've only gotten rights in the last five years or so it seems. Um, (laughs) It can be a little bit unfair towards men, right? Okay. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. Enjoy these next. Five I get years to make with crazy no statements about men yeah. because I can. Exactly. <laughs> Have fun. Yeah, um. Do you uh want to talk a little bit about the World Cup? Do you want to talk a little bit about the World Cup? You want to know something? Mm-hmm. I know nothing about what's going on right now. Oh. Do you know anything about the controversy? Because uh, this is what we about we're Qatar. About. First of all, good on you for pronouncing it correctly. I'm not going to call it Qatar. That was a, that was another mini controversy. 
Um, but you at one point said that you were rooting for Iran. <laughs> no, 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 said, no, 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 no. Okay, you said here's... I like I'm rooting for Iran, and you said you blamed it on white feminism, and <laughs> no. I lost my mind. No, 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 no. Okay, I said I, I have feel, the text. I said messages. I have conflicting feelings. So it was the Iran versus USA match, and I had conflicting feelings about it, and I'll tell you why. Obviously, I'm rooting for the US of A. Okay, in that situation. However, mm-hmm. here's the thing. I think that there are there's like a there's a solid reason for people to not fuck with Iran, right? Especially everything that's going on right now actively, right? There's a whole revolution happening. They're being fucking terrible to women especially, but to queer people, to marginalized people, Iran it has a terrible history of especially in the like it now I, as long as we've existed on earth, right? In like the last 40 years of how they have treated marginalized people. Not not good times. I think we're being frustrated. Can I add one thing? You yeah. know, we know what one marginalized group Iran is strangely very pro is uh, uh, trans, trans people. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, also Pakistan. Pakistan is weirdly except like not weirdly. I guess it's good. Pakistan recognizes the third gender, which is it amazing. Yeah. yeah. So you know, in Iran, you can get um, surgery uh, paid mm-hmm. by the state. Um, yeah. And the reason is, is because they are so vehemently homophobic that they would rather that, you know, that you are a trans woman than be a homosexual man. So they like, so they encourage it. That's wild. Yeah. Man. Anyway, Iran's got problems. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I re- and I'm not saying that any of those things, like people shouldn't be mad about that. They should. I think that when it was Iran against USA, I saw like a lot, a lot of stuff on social media about like about like just you know like a lot of white women being very passionately anti-Iran right for because of the issues that are going on right now and I think that what frustrates me is that when white feminism looks at the situation in Iran with the morality police and the hijab and everything like that they view it as a like they only support they only support that stuff when it comes to women being allowed to remove their hijab and they ignore mm-hmm. the stuff that happens in india they ignore the stuff that happens in france where women are, are there it's a crime for them to cover their hair right for it's a okay. crime for them to wear their hijab they're being forced to remove their hijab yeah so i think that when i was saying that i was getting like i had these like troubling feelings conflicting feelings about it it was that like i want i want america to win right um but it makes me annoyed that there are americans that are extra anti-iran because of that issue especially like women who generally don't give a fuck about muslim women okay so you understand like you are letting your issues with feminism and those are i'm not going to say that those are you're wrong on that i think your points are very valid right but you're letting that affect your enjoyment of sport and i mean it wasn't listen let me tell you something i sat down for about 90 seconds okay my husband was i was he was watching the trevor noah will smith interview which i guess we should talk about also um he was watching that i was sitting next to him the basement was cold i was just sitting right next to him because he was warm and the game was on, and I was texting about it. And that's it. I don't. I'm not really watching the soccer's. Football. So the opposite. So just so you know, the opposite end of that, because I think I, I would disagree with you there, because I think you're getting, you're letting your other feelings get into oh, the way God. of this beautiful thing called. No, sports. my feelings sports about are, soccer well, are that you, I don't care. But you obviously did, right? You were. It, you uh, there. Sh- there should not be. A question for you. You should be rooting for the USA. The USA has a great soccer team. Um, but well, the also office, because the, there's uh, there's a nice Muslim boy from Queens in there or Brooklyn, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So mm-hmm. and so on the opposite end, right? In in our groups when we were talking about it, there's all these guys that were like rooting for Iran, and their reasoning for it was that it's a Muslim country, right? Oh, no. um, to me, it is, that is just as silly. Like you live here. There's Muslim kids on the U.S. soccer team. Like, what are you trying to prove, right? You no, of course. Like outside I'm... influences 
get into the get in the middle of just good old fashioned sport. No, I get sports it. Like it's like I sports. listen. I understand. Okay, I'm not disagreeing. I like I, for the I don't give a shit. Number one, I don't care. Number two, all I'm saying is it annoys me that there are people who are watching that are rooting against Iran because of an issue that they only give a shit about in a specific situation. They don't actually give a shit about other women. They don't actually give a shit about Muslim women. I think that's the stuff that bothers me. That's it. But I don't care. uh, Soccer in general. I'm who's your team. Who's your team. Who you got. Who's who's uh, at the end right now. My international team is uh, actually didn't make this tournament. So it's Argentina, refer, right? No, I usually refer Italy, but they didn't make the tournament this oh, year. Oh, that's I, right, Italy. Argentina still in it. I will say, um, Argentina lost to Saudi Arabia, and I was surprised by how how much that meant to me. Um, <laughs> because like the '94 World Cup was like the first time the the Saudi team, and I think I'm not sure if they were there before, but they made it. And that's like a very cherished memory that I have of following that team and to watch them beat Argentina. I got all emotional and stuff. So um, I'm not really a soccer person. I only follow the World Cup. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of controversy with this World Cup. And that is, you know, it's an interesting conversation. There's this um, Netflix documentary called FIFA Uncovered that I highly recommend because FIFA itself is a dirty, filthy organization that's full of corruption. Mm -hmm. Um, there's a lot of stuff about how Qatar got this world cup, um, that is up for debate. Um, and then, so, I mean, it's not up for debate. It, they definitely bribed the officials, right? Oh yeah. So that's something that definitely happened. Right. But there is also within like these big sporting organizations like FIFA and Olympics and, um, you know, some other big organizations, there is like an inherent like a pro-European bias, right? Yeah. So the Arab world, because this is the first World Cup that's taken place in the Arab world, the Arab Mm -hmm. world has to combat that. So the documentary is interesting from that perspective because they do go into that. It's like, you know, Qatar wasn't getting any, you know, they they were one of the, um, they were one of the countries in the running for it, but they weren't getting any attention because they're a small Arab country. Um, and then, you know, everyone was all excited about the U S and England because they, first of all, it's a U.S. and England. And then they had all these like high profile celebrities that were representing it. Right. So like yeah. David Beckham was representing England. Prince William was representing uh, England. Bill Clinton was representing the U S. Um, so all this other stuff. So you have to kind of work against that. And then there is, a question of like, okay, you know, if if your knee jerk reaction is to to say that Arabs are bribing officials, um, one mm. of the Qatar um, representatives, he was like, you know, that is a disgusting stereotype that happens in the Arab world. That is just, you know, Arab sheikhs are just throwing around money, and that's something that we're working against. Having said that, they definitely threw <laughs> money at the officials, right? So it's like, what do you do with that? <laughs> so there's that stuff there's like the um you know there's a big debate about uh homophobia at this yeah. World Cup also because do you know about the armbands no uh no tell me more so fifa in 2020 introduced these armbands that go you know that are just armbands and they say one love mm-hmm. and there's a heart with a rainbow mm-hmm. in it right mm-hmm. so all these teams the you know these captains they would wear this this armband sure so at the 20, at this World Cup, uh, FIFA banned it. Mm-hmm. And the reason why they banned it is because of the rainbow, right? Mm. And then so then that turned into conversations about, well, we're not actually homophobic, but this is just against our culture. Like we are, you have to respect our culture. So the guys that I talked to, you know, some of Great them guys. that are <laughs> selectively, that like selectively Muslim, but mm. they're really just homophobic. Yeah, um, you know they're like, well, yeah, no, you have to respect the culture. Like, would you be okay with like prostitutes in the street? And it's like, it's like totally the, not the same thing. This is the fucking problem. Like, the second that you are like, hey, no, this that's not what we're talking about. You equate uh, homosexuals to prostitutes, right? That that's that's yeah. the problem. And then they're like, no, I'm just giving you an example. So anyway, so <laughs> that like that thing is definitely homophobic. 
right? Yeah. Um, so that's been interesting. And then just in terms of like the sport itself, it's interesting because um, do you know, do you care any at all about Messi and Ronaldo? Well, I do know that there? Messi is out, right? And he lost yeah. against Saudi Arabia. That's That was like a big loss, right? That they lost, but they're still in it. So that's he's okay. Argentinian. Okay. Um, and then uh, Rolando. Why did you come? Why am I calling him Rolando? Rolando. Yeah, Rolando. Ronaldo. Somebody I work with. Ronaldo, <laughs> yeah. right? So Ronaldo is like a big celebrity. Yeah. But this is most likely both of their last World Cup because it happens oh. every four years and they're pretty old. Um, mm-hmm. So it would be nice to watch one of them play. So, okay. That's it. Would you go? Would you, I mean, we know people who are about to go to some of the games. Yes. yes. Um, would you ever be interested to go? I would be. So I'm not really a soccer person. So I've been to like three soccer matches in my life mm-hmm. and they were all like MLS. And I was like, oh, yeah, eh. um, I, I would go for the spectacle, I guess. Um, like I'd probably want to go to like a like a Manchester United game or something like that instead. Yeah, because. The crowds are really what I'm interested in. The game really doesn't mean anything to me. Yeah. Um, I don't find it very appealing. But yeah, I'd go. Would you go? Yeah. No. Why not? At the spectacle. The wonder. Well, first of all, I wouldn't go to Qatar. Oh. I, I think, like, here's the thing. Multiple things can be true at the same time. Europeans can stereotype against Arabs. Um, um, Arabs can also do some things that are stereotypically... Uh, offensive but also accurate yes <laughs> um and uh and like you know the arab nation should be very proud of themselves for being able to bring uh soccer there right to the middle yeah. east especially because mm-hmm. it is such a huge part of the culture like yeah. i don't think that i don't know if the rest of the world understands what a big deal soccer is football is yeah. in the middle east it's the biggest sport they have um yeah. So, like, that is a huge deal, and I'm very excited for them that they were able to bring it there, right? Uh, However, the means with which they were able to put together this, like, little World Cup city in Qatar is troubling. Yeah, that's the other thing. You know, shame on me. I forgot to even bring that up. Yeah, shame on you, honestly. I'm a terrible person. So, you know... (laughs) Um, all things being equal, I really don't give a shit about the bribing, like because yeah. FIFA is a, a like a like a disgusting organization. Anyway, yeah, like so we're all just pointing out how we are all bribing, yeah. right? Yeah, it, it, I I really don't care um, about the bribing, but yeah, but that's the other part. It's like the how they had to build these stadiums, and they built these stadiums by using migrant workers that a lot of them died, like into the thousands, and they have lied about those numbers. Um, yep. So that's also very troubling. So, would you go to Dubai? You've been recently. I've been I mean, Dubai at least not recently, twice. but you've been. In the last fifteen years, I've been twice. Yeah. Well, did you enjoy yourself there? Um. So I was awed by Dubai, mm-hmm. um, and I was there for three days, I think, each time. Mm-hmm. Um. But I don't think I could last more than maybe a week in Dubai. Like mm. all of that stuff, all of that ornate shit. Mm-hmm. Um, I just, uh, I can't. That's not me. Yeah. It's just very expensive. I'm not really mm. one for shopping or anything like that. So, yeah. yeah. It's just a giant mall. It's just a giant mall. No it's out. a giant mall. Like, and there's a lot of sadness underneath it all. So, so much sadness. So mm. much sadness. It's like, I feel like, you know, like how you hear a lot in like uh, Los Angeles, right? There's a lot of people experiencing homelessness there. There's a lot Mm -hmm. of like tent cities out there and stuff. And it's especially sad because of the stark difference of like the extremely wealthy people of California versus like these, you know, um, these like these people who are experiencing like homelessness, especially after COVID and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I feel like the difference between that and Dubai is that in in Dubai, and I mean, we even know this probably from like when we lived in Saudi, is like you never saw homeless people on the street. That's just like not a thing that you see there. You don't, you don't see homeless people 
in the Middle East in that way. Um, you see people who are begging around like the in the holy cities, right? But I don't ever remember seeing like beggars in the street in like Riyadh when we were kids or anything. Yeah. It's not something that you're going to see in like Dubai or Abu Dhabi or even in Qatar because they have like I don't know what they do with the people that are experiencing homelessness in uh, the Gulf nations. And I imagine that it's not anything great. So uh, I don't know because obviously we haven't been in Saudi Arabia now for like 27 years. My yeah. understanding is um, as a Saudi citizen, um, yeah. you get a stipend from the government anyways. Uh, so you are kind of, you know, so you have money. Um, the other thing is, you know, homelessness, unfortunately in America, a lot of it is tied to substance abuse issues, right? Yeah. Where they don't have substance abuse in uh, Oh, I mean, in, they have it, Arabia. but it's just... <laughs> And no, the substance abuse is for the rich people. Yeah. Because they, they're the ones with the access to the drugs or whatever. So, yeah. Um, there's that. But I think what's sadder is there, you know, our our experience in Saudi Arabia um, and those of our friends is one tier of the, of like the Southeast Asian migrant in the Arab world. Right? Yes. Like our dad was a working professional. Most of all of our friends' dads were working professionals. Um, there's all these migrant workers that come to um, Saudi Arabia and Dubai, and they come on work visas, and they get their passports taken away from them. And yep. they basically have to work their way back. Um, and, you know, it's it's weird, like, thinking about that and talking about that out loud, especially because, you know, it came up when I'm talking to these guys about Qatar, right? Mm -hmm. um, and there is this, you know, you naturally have this, like, uh, like pro-Muslim uh, pride mm -hmm. um, when you're thinking about the Arab world, mm -hmm. um, especially because a lot of the um, stereotypes that you see in the Western world about the Arabs is that, you know, that they're just... They're barbarians. All, barbarians and you know they're just um all backwards or whatever so you know you you kind of want to go against that but you know if you go a level deeper and you see how our people essentially um brown people from southeast asia are treated in those countries um it's not pretty um, it's so not it's good like, guys it's, real it's bad life. times. It's bad times. Yeah. You, if you, basically the reason why they don't experience, I think I was just thinking about this as you were talking about like the fact that if you are a citizen of that country, which you have to be, you only become a citizen if you have the blood. Um, yeah. If you're we were born there. Yeah. We were born there. Didn't get anything. Um, no. You have to be like Emirati or you have to be Qatari or you have to be Saudi. Like you have to be something from there. Um, unless you're Yemen, then they just starve you out because they were terrible <laughs> to Yemen. That's horrible. Um, but like if you are, that's the only way. And so you never get, you never have to worry about experiencing that kind of a situation because yeah. the government will take care of you. But the people who would end up becoming homeless would likely be migrants. And yeah. those migrants just get either put in jail or sent back to their country. And that's it. Yeah, no. And that's you how know, that's how they solve it. And it's really they, fucked up. When they're even when they're working, you know, they don't get to like live in a house. They work in these camps. Um, yeah. So they basically This is such a bummer. What a bummer. So anyway, bummer. fuck yeah. that. You know what, guys? Don't watch the World Cup. Fuck it all. Don't don't give them your views. It's weird yeah. also to see like uh, Arabic like on screens. Um like on like ESPN and stuff, like even when they show the logo for like the uh, oh. World Cup, yeah, yeah, it's that that's interesting to me. I'm like, oh, that's cool, Ooh, but it's bad. Um, anywho, Prince William and Kate are in town. They were in mm -hmm. Boston. They went to a Celtics game. Yeah, and nobody gave a shit. <clears throat> Why should anybody give a shit? Nobody really. should give a shit. And you know what's better, Raheel? Did you see the Netflix trailer for the new movie or the new show coming out? I have not. What's about Harry show? and Meghan? Oh, they're having a documentary also. It's their yep, it's their it's their documentary. And they dropped the trailer the same day as uh William and Kate were coming into Boston. And no one gives a shit. So Kate wore I this, don't, yeah. 
I I have to at some point I have to uh, disconnect from no, Harry and Meghan too. I mm. think I think at some point I have to be like, okay, I am rooting for you in this stupid, silly thing that's going on because I am rooting for them. Yeah. Um, because I want the monarchy to crumble. Yes. At the same time, I also need to stop caring about Harry and Meghan. I we, listen, there. you don't have to care. <laughs> Just because you're viewing a thing doesn't mean you care about these people. Yeah, it's like how I watch the World Cup. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you're like, all right, you're there. There you are. You're fine. Yeah. You know? I mean, I think I care for... Do I care? I mean, I don't know. It's like, do I care for I care for about Harry's... the narrative, right? Yeah, so I like, care about the I... narrative, but, like, I'm not worried about, like, Harry's well-being. Like, I think Harry's going to be just fine, you know? I think so, too. Yeah. Like, I think now that they're not in the family anymore and they're, like, over here in California living next to Oprah or whatever, like, I think they're just fine. Obviously, when they were over there, it was like, okay, we should we should and could be worried about, like, Megan's well-being because she was probably being, like, fucking tortured by these monsters. But yes. now I'm like, meh. Kate wore a bright green dress asking to be gift. Like, <laughs> people were just putting shit on her. Like like she wore a bright green dress. Oh, so it was like a green screen. A green screen, yeah. Yeah, I see. You silly, silly woman. What are you doing? Maybe it was on purpose. I don't know. And William Maybe looks it's... terrible. Well, that's yeah. what hate does. They asked, yeah, that is what hate does. They asked Jalen Brown how it felt to play in front of the Royals. Oh, what do you say? Jalen Brown said, is very... He said... He's one of my guys. <laughs> he said nothing. He said it felt like playing any other game. Yes. Yeah. So but I mean, what else was he going to say? What else was he going to say? Oh, wow. I was so starstruck. No. That fucking <laughs> no, so... inbred piece of shit. No, thank you. <laughs> Jalen Brown is pretty outspoken. He got caught up in the Kyrie stuff mm-hmm. um, a little bit, which was disappointing. But I think it's just because he wasn't paying attention. But uh, I like Jalen Brown a lot. Yeah. He speaks up. Yeah. Okay. Uh, last thought. Do you want to? Did you watch the Will Smith um, interview with uh, Trevor Noah? I did. No, you people don't know this, but you were very mad about the slap. I was very mad about the slap when it happened. Yes. You were very upset. And then uh, the cliff notes of that interview is that he apologized a lot. He said it was just a really bad time. It was a terrible night for him, which I'm like, was it? You were having a great time. You were dancing with your Oscar, sir. Um, but he was like really apologetic. But he his big thing is that he is coming out with a – he's made a new movie and um, or a TV show. I'm not sure which one it is. Um, but it's he feels – Huh? It's a movie, right? So he feels terrible that because he is involved, that these filmmakers who are pouring their heart into this, like, you know, movie about black stories, especially, um, that they would be disqualified essentially from the Oscars because of him. So I think he's like making an effort to do his rounds and say sorries as far as he can to make sure that like those people who work really hard don't get disqualified from it or like that they're not, you know, shunned by Hollywood because it's a Will Smith project, which I think is like quite honorable of him. Like I think it's nice. Um but I also didn't think it was that big of a deal. Like I had, I was like mm. you don't think he should you don't think he should have gotten um uh the flack that he got for Real he was slapping. recently put on a list for... of problematic people and yes. he was put on the same list as like rapists and like racists and like sex offenders I and that's that. what's I, fucked I, I, up and he's getting well, I, bundled I, I, up under a list of people who have done really really fucked up shit i think that what he did was fucked up but i don't think it was so fucked up that he's gonna need to be blacklisted from the community for like the way that he has well so i, I mean I, I think we probably need more time to go through it right um, just, I think part of the reason why it was so jarring for me is because of how much I love Will Smith. Like when we moved here, the Fresh Prince was my favorite show. I followed him for the last 27 years. I wasn't the biggest Will Smith fan in like the last 10 years because I didn't like, like the, like the movies that he, that were coming out. Um, it, they really weren't movies for me. Right. But overall I loved Will Smith. Right. 
the thing that about that night, about that moment that was so jarring was it still seemed so, you know, like the, it was shocking. I'm still in shock. Like Will Smith <laughs> went on stage and slapped Chris Rock on the <laughs> face at the Oscars. It sounds like Mad Libs it is. when you say it. It is. It sounds. Crazy. It sounds. It sounds made up, right? But here's and, the thing. You know, and, and I was I was listening to the to his interview, right? Uh-huh. And I want to have as much grace as possible for somebody going through stuff. I really do think that obviously you're not. You know, Will Smith is a very smart person. Will Smith absolutely deserved his place in the world because he's very, very, very talented. Like he earned everything that he got, right? Mm-hmm. But. You know, the question is, okay, we cancel people, right? And we rightfully cancel people. Mm -hmm. I think for his action, for that action, Will Smith having to sit out a couple of years isn't a big ask. Now, Mm -hmm. do do I think he's on the same list as sex offenders? Of course not. I'm not a maniac. But I think it's okay. It's okay that Will Smith, I mean, right now he's out there because he's got to promote this movie. And I get that, that, you know, he's wants to highlight the work of these other people that he was working with that are suffering because of his involvement, right? But post mm-hmm. that, right? It's okay if he's on the sidelines for a little bit. It does, He doesn't have to be in the spotlight. And then, you know, I also, in all this, um, there was, uh, there, you know, there's a lot of people that were like, oh, you know, Chris Rock deserved it. No, I, you know, he did not deserve to get slapped and humiliated. Well, we don't have to go, no, we don't have to go all the way back to all that. I don't want to get into that. But my point is that I think it's very nice of him. I think that he's fine with not being in the limelight. I don't think that he really cares about that. I think I appreciate the fact that he went and did an interview and a majority of his interview really was about like, I just don't think that it would, it would really be terrible if these people who have worked on a really, really hard on this project got dinged for it because of me, because of I what I did. I get that. How mm-hmm. many movies come out every year? Right. How many movies get sidelined because of something or the other? Right. I think Will Smith going out there, making a case for his movie. Sure. Good. That is, you know, he's a big celebrity. Him doing that for those folks. I think that's a noble thing. Right. But if the movie doesn't catch on as a result of everything that's going yeah, on, that's on him. That's fine. That's it, that's cool. also that's also okay. It's not the biggest okay. loss in the world. That's feel all like saying. that. Well, that's also like the, the consequences of your actions, sir. That's yeah. fine. But at least he's yeah. doing something about it. Yeah, no, I was like, he, good for you, sir. He showed up. He showed up, and I was listening to his interview, and I was like, for some reason, I don't. Uh, I'm not satiated by this. <laughs> Okay. by this apology right and then i'm like well i'm an asshole like yes. what, do I, what do i want from him like what do, do you I want, want him from to, the like, man Who personally apologize to me you know what i mean like he said that he was going through a lot right and i was yeah. like well that's not enough for me I, I need to hear more from will and i'm like no i really don't it really no. doesn't matter, right? he doesn't owe anybody jack shit okay he he, the, the same shit. way the same way he doesn't owe us anything is is the same way that like people don't owe it to him or anybody else to go and watch his movie like who cares exactly like, yep. right so but i appreciate him making the effort to do that yeah, he so showed, that was good he, sh- he showed up it takes balls i guess um i i don't know how chris rock is handling all this stuff i really don't think i've heard him speak about this yet so maybe oh, that'll be interesting he's or maybe been doing after- stand-up about it he's been doing stand-up but i don't think he's actually gone like you know in all into how he felt about it i think he's just been like talking about the about the incident and just like making a joke about you know about like the craziness of what happened but i wonder how he feels uh that's all but but, you know by the way we're not owed shit we're not owed shit and we don't owe shit we don't you know we can but we can go watch this movie I, i was you know the the subject of the movie is very very interesting um so Maybe that is something that I'd like to watch, but if I don't watch it and it doesn't catch on, then it's okay. Yeah, it is what it is. Can you believe that all happened in this calendar year? That's crazy. In 2022? It's 2022. amazing. What a time to be alive. It felt like the Don't Worry Darling uh, press <laughs> stuff happened for like six months. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I don't know. Anyway. I don't know why that piece of shit movie keeps coming up on this episode. But you Honestly, can't quit it for some reason. I can't. I can't. I think I'm gonna watch it. What if I watch uh, that movie and I don't? I still am on three quarters of the way of the second episode of The Sopranos. <laughs> no, what do you mean? What if? That is exactly what's going to happen. There's no way you are watching an episode <laughs> of The Sopranos before you're watching. Don't worry, Dr. Who's to say? Who's I'm to, to say. say. I am saying. <laughs> Who's to say? You know what, Raheel? Maybe I'll prove you wrong, okay? Maybe all the naysayers, like the naysayers of William Willard Smith, just like people were naysaying whomever i will i will prove you you wrong okay maybe i will you know what i'm gonna check into a hotel don't talk to me next week don't talk to me i'm gonna check into a hotel i'm gonna watch the rest of that one episode of the sopranos (laughs) so you have 15 minutes to go (laughs) more like 25 honestly (laughs) (laughs) sounds like half (laughs) okay everyone Uh, i will be back what What? one thing what? <laughs> did, you hear, did you hear? I'm very sad. I can't believe. Did your husband tell you? What? Did you hear what happened to Handsome Jimmy and his handsome oh, no. ankle? No, what happened? His handsome Hans- ankle? Handsome Jimmy broke his handsome ankle and now he's done for the year. Oh, no. It's not even questionable? It's not even questionable. He's having surgery like tomorrow. Oh, broken foot. Done. Ooh, yikes. Broken foot. Yeah. Oh, he looks so well. handsome. He was going on the cart. And now, here's the fun thing. Uh, their new quarterback is this uh, rookie, seventh rounder. He was the last pick in the NFL draft, and his name is Brock Purdy. So now I get to say, I I like your Purdy mouth. Oh my god! Purdy. Okay, he looks about mm, thirteen. He looks Brock 13, Purdy. Yeah. He's yeah. not. I mean, we're not we're not Jimmy G handsome uh, levels, but um, he did really, really well today to beat the no. The Dolphins, okay, well, oh my so. god, born in nineteen ninety nine. Oof. Crazy. That is painful. All right. Well, um, that's that. Uh, thanks for listening, everyone. Um, my our condolences to the 49ers fans and thoughts best and wishes. Prayers to Jimmy. Thoughts and prayers to Jimmy's foot. Um, I'll be back. I'll be back on uh, Wednesday to talk to Arthi about Family Karma. <laughs>